fleecy fog bank rolls by, and far below gleams a colorful city by the Golden Gate, San Francisco. Originally settled by two Franciscan monks in 1776, the year of American independence, San Francisco has grown from an Indian mission village to one of the largest and most important cities in America. In 1846, when the United States took possession of California, the total population of San Francisco was 450. Two years later, the cry of gold was heard round the world, and thousands rushed in, seeking riches and adventure. Today, the descendants of those San Francisco presents an enthralling sight. Ships are docked from all the seven seas, giant buildings towering into the warm Pacific sky, Telegraph Hill rising almost out of the water, its sheer cliffs topped with trees. Once a semaphore station to signal the arrival of ships, Telegraph Hill is a bit of the Mediterranean old world is seen in the Neapolitan-like harbor of Fisherman's Wharf, one of the most interesting sights of San Francisco. Rows of picturesque fishing smacks, their hulls painted blue as the sky, give off the very tang of the sea. Here, too, the lovely gulls raise their plaintive cries. They can swallow the fish, but the fish stories are too much for them. Fishing is not off characteristically hilly, rising from sea level to several hundred feet above the sea. Wide streets built along steep grades are a common sight in the residential districts. Dolores, founded in 1776, is the oldest building in San Francisco. It is still in a fine state of preservation. From Twin Peaks, 900 feet high, we gaze enraptured over the city, like the site of Rome from one of its seven hills. No wonder Robert Louis Stevenson, beloved English author, called San Francisco the most interesting city in the Union. From the air, we see the largest swimming pool in the world, 1,000 feet long, with a capacity of six million gallons of seawater. One of the glories of Golden Gate Park is the charming Japanese tea garden with its picturesque pagoda, like a scene lifted from the land of cherry blossoms. In the little pool is reflected an oriental rustic bridge, always an attraction for children. The dog can cross it readily enough, but it isn't so easy for a mere man. Beyond the park, Mile upon mile of broad ocean beach extends along the Pacific shore, where great waves roll in from China across the sea, crashing majestically on the rocks of Point Lobos, named by the Spanish for sea wolf. These rocks are the home of a large colony of seals, who for years have been protected and cared for by the park authorities. Lazily, they disport themselves in the warm sunshine, showing off to the world their beautiful sealskin coats. Ages ago, they were land animals, but for some unknown reason, they took to the water. The beautiful palace of the Legion of Honor is situated in Lincoln Park, overlooking the Golden Gate. It contains many fine works of art, among them a copy of Rodin's statue, The Thinker. It was built as a memorial to the sons of San the lovely Palace of Fine Arts is all that remains of the Panama Pacific Exposition of 1915, which celebrated the opening of the Panama Canal. This building represented the finest in architecture, painting, sculpture, and landscaping. Visitors gazed in admiration upon this man-made masterpiece. Nearby lies Yacht Harbor, a pocket-like enclosure for the beautiful pleasure craft sailing the blue waters of the Pacific. The grim citadel of a Spanish... Across the bay in Berkeley, we glimpse the Campanile clock tower of the University of California, one of the most beautifully situated schools, Bolt Hall of Law, and the Greek Theater. Fort Point, 
which forms one side of the Golden Gate, is at the tip of the Presidio, formerly a Spanish garrison, and now a government military reservation. And so we bid farewell to San Francisco as we fly over the Golden Gate toward the setting sun in the western skies.